Socorro, oh, yeah, yeah, Socorro so also much. known as Coco Gutierrez Magallanes. And I believe uh, Javier Camargo is also with us. And Cora, I, I don't know exactly who, but I know Socorro is Coco. So I pronounced them for you. <laughs> Coco is easy for us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Marlon, você Thank pode you. colocar o pessoal na tela e retirar eu e o professor João. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you. Good thank you. Thank you. Thank you for for uh, accepting in such a short notice. Uh, our proposal to share with you our work. I know Norma Cantu would have shared it anyways, but we thought it was a great opportunity for us to share the web page that we have been working on, and that is work in progress. Is everyone hearing me okay? Yes, okay, great. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning to our audiences in Brazil. Uh, we are very, very, very happy to be here. Again, we want to thank the organizing committee for allowing us to, in the last minute to, to, to show. We, we wish we would have had um, uh, more time, uh, but we, I know that this is the beginning of a, of a relationship in the future, right? So this is excellent. And, and we want to thank you for your generosity and for Norma's generosity to also share her time with us as she is also part of this process. I would like to just give a brief introduction. Um, uh, uh, we have been participating in El Mundo Surdo conferences for uh, since 2009, and it was in 2019 that we um, uh, spoke with Norma Javier and myself spoke with Norma about the possibility of having an international symposium also in Mexico and Puebla. And we were uh, in the planning in the process, thanks to Norma Cantu's encouragement and guidance and and impulso to do this. Uh, uh, we are junior scholars, so we were a, a bit overwhelmed and, and felt that we probably weren't ready. And she really encouraged us to go for it and to uh, continue with the planning. And so we did. We prepared the ground in Puebla, in Mexico City, in UNAM, BUAP, and TEC uh, to, to do it in, in, in 2020. Unfortunately, uh, the pandemic hit and we were in shock, overwhelmed, but uh, we felt it was necessary to connect in the context of the pandemic to continue to do work that matters, as Gloria Antaldúa would say, and as Norma Cantu always reminds us, right? And so we felt it was uh, uh, necessary and, and important to connect even through digital means, through uh, through internet, through 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 these platforms that are uh, available to us, right? And so uh, we decided to launch the symposia or the encuentro, and we called it a virtual dialogue. And uh, uh, and Pantla times, and we felt um, that we could gather um, planetarily as the, the the Mundo Surdo conference had proposed in 2019 exactly when we we talked about this with Norma Cantu the theme of the of the mundo surdo was planetary citizenship it was almost a prophetic right um yes. uh, title right for the for for what was coming uh, unfortunately right with the pandemic but i believe that um the circumstances really pushed us to connect the multiple constellations around the, you know, around the planet, the, the ideas that have uh, connected us um, planetarily, as uh, Gloria also had um, proposed in her body of work, right? And so we 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 connected through uh, two events: a virtual international dialogue and an ofrenda, right? Uh, the virtual international dialogue was an opportunity to connect and celebrate the body of work. For no, of Norma of Normal um, Ansaldua, and uh, the ofrenda allowed us to offer our um, our, our gratitude and um, and our memory 
to those that, that had left us uh, throughout the pandemic from March to November. And uh, it's been two years now, right? We recently had uh, uh, Day of the Dead in Mexico and California and Texas, right? In the Chicana, Chicano world, we celebrated, we welcomed our dead uh, on November 2nd. And we thought that this was a good opportunity to make another offering, right? To make another offering of the work that we have been doing, not just in 2020, but for the last uh, two decades in my, on, on my end. And of course, for a long, long time of Norma Cantu, Javier and Cora, who is a colleague from UNAM who couldn't make it today, but she has been collectively, we have been working on this, uh, not only in 2020, but also in this 2021 working on the web page. And for us, it really is mm, um, a privilege that you allowed us to offer this to this space and to share it. Uh, I'm gonna give the space to Javier so he could share a couple more words. And we are um, gonna ask Norma to close uh, so that um, this, this, this is a, a you know, perfect circle. Again, uh, uh, allowing uh, us to, to share work that matters. See, ¿Sí? gracias. Javier. Um, I... <laughs> Muchas gracias a todos los organizadores. Estaba tratando de compartir una pequeña diapositiva, pero este, creo que estaba teniendo un poquito de problemas. En realidad, eh, solamente decirles que la, la dirección del sitio es, eh, lo pueden buscar como Ansaldúa, Tiempos Nepantla, y ahí van a encontrar el, el sitio donde se despliegan los videos de los distintos conversatorios. Cada uno de los distintos conversatorios está editado para que puedan encontrar las voces de cada una de las participantes, de los participantes. Y bueno, aquí podrán encontrar este... Uh, me dice, ok, el link, perfecto. Este, y aquí podrán encontrar los distintas, las distintas voces que participaron, eh, más de 40 personas que participaron en, en los dos eventos. Y agradecer muchísimo, muchísimo a cada, uno de, a cada una de las participantes. Hay joyas de testimonios de cómo fueron eh, la relación con Gloria Ansaldúa. Y creo que esto cumple una, una función como pedagógica muy importante para quienes no la conocimos presencialmente, poder conectar con ella a partir de estos testimonios. Hay también elementos teóricos, experienciales muy ricos acerca de las investigaciones que están realizando para pensar estos tiempos de transformación. Y, y sobre todo hay mucho sentimiento, mucho corazón. Eh, el ver los videos es una forma de entrar en una atmósfera que yo debo de confesar que a un año, justo que, que terminó este encuentro, yo regreso y me siento todavía muy conmovido, me siento lleno de, de energía en un sentido muy, muy profundo y pues la invitación es a que ustedes lo puedan este, visitar y, y disfrutar y aprender. Muchísimas gracias a Norma por toda su generosidad, a Coco por... Eh, hacer un puente impresionante en México con, con los estudios de Gloria Saldúa y también le mandamos un saludo a Cora que pues este, no nos pueden eh, acompañar el día de hoy pero está en nuestros corazones y hay una lista enorme de participantes que tenía la intención de poder leer pero son muchísimas muchísimos pero están, están aquí presentes también, muchas gracias a todos Y ahora uh, están viendo en la pantalla el sitio web es una imagen de una chilena que vive en Texas, Liliana Wilson, que nos uh, regaló su imagen para el uso de la web y para el, el congreso que no se hizo como lo habíamos planeado en el mundo zurdo en México, pero sí se hizo a manera virtual. And in that way, uh, by having it be in virtual format, we reached across many, many borders. Muchas gracias to Coco Gutierrez Magallanes and to Javier Camargo for allowing us uh, that presence and for opening up the space, virtual space. The event was a very long one. We had a lot of testimonials, uh, auto historias, and you can see some of the, of the work that is there. For example, you're seeing a poem and then you see images. All of these were. Um, things that happened during that session that was um, synchronous. Now 
because of the web, we can go back and revisit. Igual que Javier, I too go back sometimes and go in there and see a couple of things. And it, it really is um, un, un, un dialogo internacional that happened in 2020. And I am very grateful for the opportunity to do it. Ansaldu and I had many conversations about many things, but I think we lost Norma. Is she? Sí, verdad? Maybe she, she had a connection. Yeah, probably she had a problem with her connection. So, but if you want to, to, yeah. Go ahead, Javier. Well, uh, if you can display the, the website uh, again, and just for yes. to, uh -huh. yes, here in, in the website, you can find uh, uh, both of the uh, dialogues. Uh, one is in the uh, Pestaña Remembering and the other one in Ofrenda. And in each one, you can you can read a, a small uh, semblance of each one of the participants. Oh, okay. Norma is with us again. Norma's back. Gracias. Sí. <laughs> no sé qué pasó, but I went off and I was seeing this commercial from. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, no, nada más. You were going to say, Javier, you were. No, I, I just finished. Just finished. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know how much more time we have. We have maybe about ten minutes. Is that correct, Carlos? Yes. Okay. So in those 10 minutes, what I would like to do is um, I'll share a little bit about what the pandemic, the way that Ansaldua responds or helps us respond to the pandemic. And then maybe Coco and Javier will also speak about their respective uh, situation. I'm sorry, that's my phone ringing. <laughs> I don't even... Um, so, first of all, I mentioned earlier in my talk how the Haitian migrants on the border present a, a crisis, a kind of a point, un arrebato. They're unusual. It's, unfortunately, it's not unusual. It is a constant happening on that border, and it's not new. In my view, it has been happening since, eight, since 1848 in one way or another. The violence along that border, la herida abierta, that wound remains raw. And I really thank Carlos and the group over in, in um, Brazil for mentioning that in their statement, because I think it is through conversations, here it is again, like this one, that we can heal that wound. Maybe not geopolitically, our governments may not heal it, but on a personal level and on, on the psychic level, if you will, at the spiritual level, we can create a bond and heal that wound that keeps recurring. So that was kind of where, where I was going with that. And I think that the technology that allows us to do this, such as today, is one step further. And uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing Eddie's presentation as well. Uh, because I think he's going to continue with some of those same ideas. Coco, te paso la palabra. Sí, gracias, Norma. Um, I, I would like to add that um, what crystallized for us in 2020, carrying out this dialogue and this ofrenda was the need to be uh, articulated in a constellation, right? Uh, or articulated as a red, as a network of people who are doing work that matters in, you know, planetarily. And so we want to open up uh, the website as a digital space for all of us to connect. And so we would like to um, um, offer the space to, to, you know, to people in Brazil, to people anywhere in the world, actually, who want to connect and to make it a, a, a possibility 
you know, uh, if you if you want to connect links there and, and to build on it, right? Hacer de ese espacio un espacio común, verdad? As, to make it a, a common space, right? Uh, uh, estamos en un momento de urgencia planetaria, right? We have had uh, many crises, right? We have had uh, many situations that have um, made a call to action. And I, uh, I believe that uh, Gloria Anzaldúa's work has in its root been always a call to action, verdad? Uh, and we have um, uh, right now the exodus of people planetarily, right? Estamos en la frontera México Estados Unidos y ahorita es la cuestión haitiana, pero o la población haitiana, pero antes era la, la población hondureña, antes era la población mexicana rural, antes era la población salvadoreña, antes era la población guatemalteca y parece que estamos en este constante, ¿verdad? En this historical continuum, right? As Norma uh, just said that it's an open wound, right? And we have to um, act on it, we believe, right? And this is our contribution. I mean, of course, each one of us is doing our work you know, in our classrooms, in our community spaces, in, in, our, you know, in our family spaces, in our you know, uh, uh, state spaces, right? In, 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 in constant dialogue and in, in, in contentious dialogue, right? With, with, uh, with the state, right? But we also have shown that we can articulate uh, solidarity, you know, spaces on the ground in the communities, right? Um, and so we want to offer this space also as an open space, a common space, uh, and, and to build on it collectively, because we believe that that is probably the only way we can confront or I don't want to say resolve because we no tenemos soluciones, right? We don't have the solutions or the formulas, but we can live through this situation. And we know that if this exodus is a major crisis, it's also a response to the climate change crisis, right? Uh, we have had the pandemic and the next situation we have in front of us, and the people in Glasgow are saying it, the people all over the world have been saying it, indigenous people all over the world have been saying it, right? We must take care of the earth because she has been so generous to us and we haven't necessarily been reciprocal and, and, and they have insisted, indigenous people, our grandmothers have insisted that we take care of it. And if we want to um, uh, live through this, we must respond in, 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 in solidarity ways and articulate it as a network, as a constellation, right? And we believe that this is a small contribution in that direction, right? Uh, we just want to thank uh, the organizers, you know, uh, for allowing us to share this with you and with everyone. And of course, to make this an open space, a collective open space to, to be articulated, right? To be connected and to be um, doing the work that Antaldua has uh, left as a legacy, right? For us and, and, and to think of her life and her work as a, as a memory that we must build upon, okay? That, that probably would be it on my end. No sé si Javier quieres decir algo. Pues muy rápidamente para mí, Ansaldúa es un pensamiento y una vida de transformación y estamos en tiempos de transformación. Entonces yo pienso que los diálogos que tengamos acompañados de Ansaldúa son puertas para poder eh, sentirse acompañado en estas, en estas transformaciones. Eh, yo pienso que también el pensamiento de Ansaldúa refresca muchos diálogos que ya han estado y que permiten darles una vuelta. Para mí eh, la experiencia de la pandemia es, es, es un llamado a pasar de los tiempos del desconocimiento al conocimiento como un imperativo, como una llamada urgente y algo que, que recordar para trabajar personalmente, para trabajar en este re regreso con, con las otras corporalidades, ¿no? que volvemos a estar juntos en, en algunos sentidos. Y también quisiera como decir que hay un futuro, un futuro y un cumplimiento del pasado en, en el pensamiento de Ansaldúa, porque inspira mucho a los estudiantes. Yo, en, con mis estudiantes, el pensamiento de Ansaldúa les ha permitido habitar sus investigaciones, eh, poder estar con ellas como, 
como un pensamiento encarnado, como un pensamiento que, que está haciendo algo en el mundo y que les permite a ellas estar haciendo junto con ella algo en el mundo. Muchas gracias. Obrigado, obrigado, obrigado. para todos, para todos. So we have to say thank you very much, uh, Coco, Javier, Professor Cantu. Uh, this was we are we are here to uh, to build bridges, as Professor Cantu said before. And then Zaudua wanted this for us. 